work with me today. This is Rip Roaring Garage, a place where I'm cool, as long as you keep your mitts off my tools. Another Ranchero episode, which means more welding. And I know you guys really loved meh, me doing all the weld stuff and whatnot at 40 minutes worth of it, but work needs to be done and I might as well record because meh, 20 views for a video is fun. dark in here again the plan is pretty straightforward funny thing is welding and fabric cabling is kind of a great equalizer because while actual welding there's a lot of skill and experience when it comes to figuring out the way you want to take a piece of metal and just uh, do i bend it here do i bend it there do i do a, you know, a little bit more five millimeter six millimeter three quarter inch whatever kind of radius of a bend whatever it's pretty much different every single time and that requires a little bit of planning now i had made this um piece and it was gonna fit here like that but this is way too thick. Uh, it's, it's a pain in the butt to shape this, to get this right. So we're not gonna do that. Instead, I bought this um, sheet of sheet metal. Now, since this was measured to be a butt weld, I wanna kind of give myself about, I don't know, an inch. And another inch on this side, so. In fact, I'm probably gonna use this line right here. You probably don't see it. Uh, whenever they were cold rolling this, I can see the trace of the roller, which for now it's good enough. While I was having my morning breakfast, I kind of let the um, aircraft remover kind of do its thingamabob. I got some good metal, but also I got some pitted, really rusty stuff. I can't get it out with um, the 3M. Let's see how much this will do. <laughs> this is the future blind man's cutting wheel. So I'm not going to be using it. Why is everything always in my way? I'm dumb. Well, battery died again. It's hot, but no, come on. Come on, GoPro. Finally managed to cut my piece. General idea is going to be to kind of mark out what I'm going to need. So bottom line, um, I'm gonna give myself a little bit extra, you know. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do um, plug weld or a sloppy lap joint, but the biggest thing is getting this corner resolved. Kinda, actually no, correction, see? That's why you always gotta like measure three times, cut once, so. This actually goes here. So I'm gonna be cutting this and I'm not gonna be talking that much, how much, because um, I feel itchy. Oh man, I am having a ball. There's no room in this garage, man. I'm telling you, everything is on top of everything. All right, let's, let's do this. Whenever you're like really 
messed up, broken bones, shrapnel in your body and all that. When your body is telling you stuff, like, yo, cool it. Because I don't want to have one of these in me. I don't think my battery can handle it on the GoPro. You guys You guys will be lucky because you'll just see the finished product. I can't talk anymore, fing A. Life is fun, isn't it? It took forever. There we go. And it's still freaking way too thick. Uh, well, let's see what hell what the hell we did. I'm gonna mark down what needs to be cut from here. This has to come up, that corner. That is gonna be fine. Everything else is kind of fine. All right. No idea how to do that. How am I gonna get that lower? This is bad. Nope. So, see those lines? That's where my radius should have been, but it's shifted up. So, using a little bit of mathematical stuff, I'm going to, well, uh, you'll see, you'll figure. Neighbors. What I'm gonna do is this. Get out of here. And then when this comes in, oh, we gotta go down. Yes. Yeah, that's straight enough. Hot. My voice is cracking. I'm tired and I'm out. <laughs> that's going to be my weld line. So I got to be underneath it a little bit. The idea is I'm going to use clamps and these brackets to kind of get everything aligned. Problem is I want to get this flush. Now it's time to weld. I did uh, manage to finish up that weld. The camera died on me because, you know, GoPros don't like, I don't know. It was actually kind of cool yesterday. What I did was um, pretty much this. I ran a couple of welds. Eh, I know, boogers, welding boogers. Uh, but it fits, so I'm already, I already painted, well, primed the bottom. So I'm gonna be drilling some guide um, 
screw, holes, whatever, and hopefully start some welding this patch in. Because after that, underneath all that mess, there's another hole that needs to be done. I don't know if you can see it. Um, had to take a little break because of the, you know, going to the hospital, and that's where I saw I don't know what the hell they're doing there. So, everything I gotta do has to happen twice. You guys see one? Anything? Nothing. But it's full. Thanks, WD-40. Alright, let's try some pee glass. I just hit a freaking beam. Yes, I did. You know, Jordan Peterson says, make your bed. I don't think he was talking about a truck bed. Next step, I'm gonna patch, the, tack these in, and hopefully I don't blow through that thin metal. Plans, whatever they are worth on this channel, they're worth about this much, you know? No need screws. Um, problems, as usual. Before I do that, I'm gonna recommend to you one of the most important things every guy 
needs in the shop. And that's the shop mom. Thanks, mom. She does help out a lot, old grumpy bastard like me. So if you can get a shop mom, then you're on the right track. Now, there's a seam here from the factory, right where I'm pointing, okay? And it just decided to separate. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to just fill that in as best as I can. I'm not gonna get water this high. I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about this gap here, which once I tack weld it, then I can really beat this to ever loving, like it owes me money. Now it's time to do the welding. Now I'm a heavy dude. So I'm not going to be sitting in the bed for all this part because I don't want to shift weights. Yes, it's load of boogers, a load of boogers, but you do the test, you put the light underneath so you can see like there, all right, but then you don't see anything else. Go ahead, hit that thumbs down button, right? I know some of you want it because, oh, that's not the way you weld it, it's all horrible. Yeah, it is. What, you people got nothing better to do than thumb down a video of a guy that never welded before? That's called learning. I'm trying to show that if a moron like me can do it, then come on, grab one of these. You know, you got one of these things. Somebody gave this for free. Um, you know what? It plugs into 110 and it's good enough for me. And it's good enough for this piece of junk because otherwise it'll be in the junk. Yet. Now, excuse me while I continue with this revival. Because that's apparently the key word we're using. Revival. I am, I am the god of cars. I revive I am the, the grave. All right, whatever. I think it's all the fumes. What I've learned, it's a recap. I know I'm sticking a lot, but I'm kind of trading off a few things. Normally when you stick, when this just stick, and it sticks like that, it means you don't have enough amperage to melt the metal just enough to where it sticks. and it cools down, especially at 6013. But I don't want to go too high in amperage, right? I'm at 60 right now, which is low, at least for these conditions. Because then I burn holes, because this thing is so rotted. It's basically, this is just a stopgap, give this car a couple of more years of life, because I, I think it wants to live, and I identify with that. This is not just about cars and revivals of the car. This is also my revival as well. So you're giving a thumbs up for that. Enough with the touchy feel. Let's get back to work. Oh boy, yeah. As you can see there, not great. There's like a lot of gappage going on. And all of this is gonna be cleaned up and filled. All right, it's day, I don't know, four or five. Freaking VA keeps killing me with ruining my schedule. But I got a new toy. Hopefully, I should get this a little bit done. Uh, English, do I speak it? I got myself a new helmet. So I got the Miller um, Auto Darkening Helmet. I'm gonna put up the name. I'm gonna have a link down in the description. I gotta thank my mom because she bought it for me. Uh, she saw me struggling with the Lincoln Electric. I don't want to hate on it too much. It does what it's supposed to do if you're a pro. I'm not a pro at welding. So the Miller has a 1 over 20,000 second response time, whereas this is a little slower. I think 1 over 10,000. 
which you'd be surprised how much of a difference that makes. It does. This one, once you're done welding, it stays dark for a period of time. A lot of welders prefer that because they, they're still sensitive to, you know, the bright, glowing, molten, you know, the puddle. It's still bright. Now for me, I kind of want it, the moment my arc is done, I want to see, especially because I stick. I suck at this stuff. So. So I'm going to do a very brief um, introduction. Basically the questions I had when I just got this thing out of the box. Now the first thing, it's not a friction based hold up. It's a, like a detent, a snap, and it's a little stiff, especially at the beginning. But then it comes down and, you know, has a break so it doesn't slam in your face, unlike the Lincoln Electrics. That's good, especially, you know, like I said, I got the bet, I did not get back. I got the bad neck and all that, so, you know, it is a little heavier, which can get old. So, you have this weird hinged back, uh, whatchamabob, with the ratcheting adjustment. You have two bands with like a baseball cap style uh, adjustment, which it's, it's simple. You just pop these tabs out and push the little pin out through the hole and put it where you want. Now, it has this separate uh, head thing that kind of clips on and you want to you put it where you want to. Uh, kind of distributes the weight more evenly. Here's a better view of the dual hinge back thingamabob. This is the the guts, okay? So you turn it on, and you got your shade, which is pretty much just like a knob on an auto darkening helmet. You know, you go darker or lighter. That's the delay for returning to normal, not the delay for the darkening. I thought that was like, why bother, right? But this is, like in my case, I wanted zero. The moment the spark is out, it's done. Then you have the sensitivity. At what point does it kick on or off? I think it's actually only off. The cool thing is you hold down this button here, all right, the auto sense, and it figures out the lighting. You point it kind of like where you're gonna weld and hit that button and bam, it'll do its thing automatically. Then if you push the uh, power button on again, it'll change right here where it says weld. You can do that's for cutting, that's for grinding. And then there's this X mode, which is supposedly for outside welding or other kind of low light weird conditions, you use that. But I'm gonna be pretty much using it just in the weld mode. So thanks to Shop Mom, TM, registered trademark. I want to see how the thing works. It's really hot, like brutally hot outside today. Just a lot easier wearing the, you know, mechanic manicure t-shirt. I do want to thank again, really quick. I want to thank the guys that have been buying the t-shirt. Um, at this point, it's just mostly a sign of uh, support, not a financial one, because Amazon takes all the profits. But I did get the, the thing down, the uh, pirates that stole my design. Yeah, they're gone. So that's a good thing. All right, so I had some issues here last night at like 4 a.m. I was welding because, you know, I had that mood. I have been kind of testing a little bit other areas. These are the areas where I need to beat down on it, but I kind of want to weld the lower areas first and then beat down on this stuff that is the plan what's going to happen is I'm probably gonna burn through everywhere especially here I'm gonna burn through here and there's a fuel line underneath which for the love of God. all right so I put a bunch of uh, these metal plates trying to get it as um Lush as possible so no drippage occurs. Ow! That's just in case I burn through, which hopefully I'm not going to. My magnet. I ain't gonna lie, this thing, this thing is amazing. If you've never seen one of these, basically what it looks like is a magnet plate in there, and as you tighten it, um, there's actually a magnet inside that gets closer to this. And then once it's on, oh, it, it holds. 
but when you pull it by screwing it out, it separates and now you can actually pull it off without a lot of force. Normally, you're supposed to take the cable, hook it into here, but I've noticed it works pretty okay just clamping onto it because there are areas where I want the clamp still. I just changed my uh, sensitivity because it was still staying dark too long. So now let's try it again. That's much better. It's the best I can do with what I got. Eh, here's the problem I found. There's, it almost looks like it's freaking copper. You're probably not getting that color. It just looks like rust. Um, it's not that bad here, but if I leave that any longer, it will get bad, which means all of this, all of this crap, you know, has to come down. Because this car, for better or for worse, the outside... Oh, hello, spider. Get out of there. Go here. Anyways. Um, I, I would like to preserve the outside. Yeah, look at that. You know, see? All this stuff just loves to trap moisture underneath. I'm gonna end it here. <laughs> it looks like we're turning into a welding channel. An amateur welding channel. But, um... This car needs to get out because I got big plans involved the bus and a couple of revivals of some strange cars and I want you guys to see that and I need room to work. So I am Alexander the Great and remember motor oil is thicker than blood. That's right, you're the rippers. So I appreciate every single one of you that subscribed. It's 2 a.m. I gotta go wake up see the doctor tomorrow. Yeah. I'm gonna be fine.